twice in one week, SpaceX pushed the envelope by launching its 16th Workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. The one-time success can be considered the luck of SpaceX, but the second success is a clear demonstration of their professional ability. This is a remarkable feat that has elevated the Falcon 9 to the pinnacle of successful reusability in the orbital rocket category. It not only broke its own records, but also surpassed every limit in the space industry, setting a completely new standard that other rockets strive to achieve. So how did the Falcon 9 do this? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The Falcon 9 first stage booster tail number 1060 successfully landed in the Atlantic Ocean upon the unmanned drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas approximately eight and a half minutes after liftoff on the 14th. This was the second launch attempt for this mission, following a postponement on Friday the 13th. Booster 1060 took off from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40 at 11.50 p.m., carrying 54 Starlink satellites into orbit. Once again, we were treated to the breathtaking sight of the bright lights forming a large V in the night sky. This marked the 16th flight for this particular booster, following the successful launch of 22 second-generation Starlink satellites by Booster 1058 on July 9th. B-1060 set a new record for SpaceX with the company's 217th consecutive successful mission for the Falcon rocket family, an unprecedented achievement in the history of space launch vehicles. The breakthrough of reaching 16 launched times with boosters 1058 and 1060 set the stage for new milestones for the Falcon rocket line. Bill Gerstenmayer, SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, stated in May that engineers are in the process of certifying the Falcon 9 booster for a maximum of 20 flights for Starlink missions. That gives us a lot of capability to continue to reuse boosters and continue to keep flying, Gerstenmayer said. I think we are able to meet our manifest plus some with the boosters that we've got in work. Even in the past, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has expressed his goal of reusing boosters up to a hundred times. And considering the current progress of Falcon 9, achieving that milestone is not impossible to meet in the future. While reaching a hundred launches may not be certain at this point, gradually increasing the target to 40 or 50 reusable launches is entirely feasible. When compared to other reusable rockets in the world, no rocket has achieved the level of reusability that Falcon 9 has. In fact, Falcon 9 can easily surpass even the most formidable rockets of the past. Although Ariane 5 has an impressive launch count of 117 flights with similar prototypes, it can only be launched once due to its lack of reusability and its high cost makes it less competitive in the launch market. Similarly, the Soyuz rocket, known as Russia's workhorse, is currently not available for reuse. The outstanding performance of Falcon 9's reusable launches has made it a dominant player in the Western market. Over time, the turnaround time for SpaceX's rocket has gradually decreased from several months to less than a month. Falcon 9 is going up so much that you forget it's going up. It's almost boring, which is kind of what you want, ironically, said Phil Smith, a senior space analyst at Bryce Tech. Alongside the significant progress of Falcon 9, the launch market has witnessed the entry of several new rockets to complete and challenge SpaceX's dominance. Notable competitors include ULA's Vulcan, Vulcan, Rocket Lab's Neutron, Relativity's Terran R, Firefly's MLV, and Blue Origin's New Glenn. One of the most notable advancements we have seen is from Rocket Lab, which is targeting a price point of around $50 million per launch for their Neutron rocket, which is $17 million less compared to the current price of the Falcon 9. To position the Neutron as a formidable competitor to the Falcon 9, Rocket Lab has recently announced plans to enhance the reusability of their Electron rocket, aiming to actualize the initial stages of rocket reusability technology. They intend to retrieve the boost from the water and implement design optimizations and internal changes to safeguard sensitive components against salt water damage. This strategic move by Rocket Lab clearly indicates their intentions to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 in terms of reusability while offering a comparatively lower price point in the market. However, it's important to note that Rocket Lab still needs time to demonstrate the effectiveness of its reusable approach. Until they can introduce a reusable medium lift rocket, Falcon 9 will remain in a dominant position in securing space launch contracts. SpaceX's reusability capability is truly unique and is leading the way in shaping the production of next-generation rockets. When the idea was initially introduced, many within the industry thought SpaceX was crazy. The concept of landing such 
launch a large rocket on a floating platform seemed far-fetched to them. But now, after several years of experience with rocket landings, there is no doubt that landing the Falcon 9 has been an enormous success for SpaceX. During the process of improving the Falcon 9, a significant milestone was reached in April of 2018, when SpaceX introduced the new and enhanced Block 5 version of the Falcon 9. This upgraded iteration incorporated several improvements to the engine, heat shield, grid fins, and landing legs, all aimed at increasing reusability. With a considerable number of boosters already successfully landed, SpaceX had the opportunity to thoroughly analyze each booster and identify the parts that experienced the most wear and tear. One of the major advantages of recovering rockets instead of allowing them to crash into the ocean is the ability to enhance their safety. Each mission serves as a real-life stress test for the rocket, providing valuable data that goes beyond computer simulations. The upgrades introduced in the Block 5 variant of the Falcon 9 were primarily focused on improving reusability, allowing for more efficient and cost-effective operations. Although this upgrade reduced the need for extensive refurbishment, the average turnaround time for a booster decreased from 356 days to 107 days, with the fastest turnaround time being 72 days. Currently, the record stands at 21 days. SpaceX does not necessarily require super-fast turnarounds for the Falcon 9 as they maintain a large fleet of boosters ready for flight across the country. With SpaceX aiming to achieve a refurbishment time of just 24 hours, they would need to match the turnaround process of airliners, with each rocket requiring only a quick inspection between flights. When the first stage booster returns to Earth either by road or sea, it is lifted onto a transport vehicle and taken back to SpaceX's hangar. SpaceX currently has several refurbishment hangars where Falcon 9 operations take place between launches. The landing legs are typically folded before being placed on the transport vehicle. However, in the past, SpaceX faced many issues with the landing legs, often requiring manual removal. The landing legs are perhaps one of the most frequently refurbished components as they experience significant impact during landing. After the booster is brought back to the hangar, the refurbishment process begins, with each engine undergoing rigorous checks to ensure that all components are flight ready. According to Musk, each Merlin engine can perform up to a thousand flights without refurbishment. However, another benefit is the ability to examine an engine that has completed multiple flights to identify the parts that wear out the fastest. This is certainly one of the reasons why the Falcon 9 is the most stable and reliable rocket in the world. The hydraulic grid fin system also needs to be checked for any leaks. Fuel tanks and pressurized vessels undergo a series of ultrasonic tests to detect small cracks that could lead to failures after the rocket is pressurized for flight. This is perhaps one of the biggest unknowns for every Falcon 9 rocket, and with each mission, SpaceX gathers vast amounts of data on the pressure cycles that each tank can withstand. Once the booster has passed the inspection process, it then undergoes a static fire test with all nine engines before being attached to the second stage and payload. Currently, all these checks still need to be completed as they enter the realm of multiple reusability. Each mission provides them with additional knowledge about the number of flights each booster can perform, and over time, the refurbishment process will become more refined. In the future, we can't help but look forward to SpaceX achieving even more remarkable milestones with Falcon 9. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX, as well as the storied achievement of the Falcon 9. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.